Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I thought I'd do a little bit of an update video to last year's video talking about the varieties I would choose if I lived in a place like California um, or any hot or dry climate uh, because I pretty much live in the opposite. I live in a, in a, it does get hot in the summer, but not as hot as, as some other places like Southern California or Arizona or West Texas. You know, we do get hot here in the summer, but it's also very humid. And I have a totally different set of requirements that I look for uh, when it comes to growing figs here. Um, it has to be able to not split, has to be able to hold up to our moisture, and preferably it has some drying capabilities to it. So there's a whole different host of different things that I normally look for, but people ask me for this kind of thing. What do you recommend, Ross, for somebody in a, a dry or hot climate? And this also video can kind of also apply to people in Northern California that are more inland, um, people in the Mediterranean that are also in a hot or dry place, um, and also in the Middle East. So there's a number of places and climates throughout the entire world that this can apply to. Um, I should also mention that this is not for my own personal um experience right I don't live in this place so I don't really know for sure however I do have a really good hunch and I have a good eye for this kind of thing of years of, of learning about these different fig varieties I can tell you that I would have said and, and I did say this sort of in last year's video that you guys are mostly just looking for flavor whatever are the best tasting figs and which ones have the best potential to be the best tasting fig those are the ones that I would probably go for first where you guys live and I still am on that mindset but there's a whole nother section of requirements I think you guys have and it's pretty simply revolving around spoilage and a lot of times it's too hot and it's too dry and you guys end up getting some figs that ferment on the inside and you don't really know it until you open it up but that's not a good thing um, that ruins the fig and of course you want to eat the figs right and you want to eat them at the perfect ripeness so some figs are just really not going to be able to stand up to that perfect heat even though or that high heat even though they may be you know a fig that uh, has great qualities to it it may not always be the case you may not always find something that's perfect in a, a hot or dry place but you guys do have pretty much the perfect climate um, figs really don't do well when you start to introduce some moisture so you know you're really thinking about a mediterranean climate that's the perfect place for these figs and if you live somewhere similar to that you've pretty much got it made um but again there's some caveats there some things i think you guys should be aware of so you, you don't want a fig that isn't going to stand up to that heat you don't want a fig that is going to split even though it might be dry where you guys live it still can happen you don't want figs with a big eye um, you know you basically want to limit your spoilage down to a minimum um, and also there's just some figs even where I live that will just tough it out no matter what it, it just seems like there's certain genetics out there um, and they will just withstand anything you throw at them so it's, uh, it's just important, I think, overall to um, find the right genetics. And, of course, we mentioned this in the last video, but, you know, the, the guy that lives down the street probably has something figured out, right? He might have a variety that's well adapted to where you live. That's the key. You want to find something that is well adapted to your location. So a fig that's well adapted in the, mid in the Mediterranean or the Middle East is probably going to do well where you live. Um, you know, for me, I have to look for figs that are doing well in the south of the United States or they're doing well in the northeast or they're doing well in a place like France, Croatia, um, parts of or colder parts of Europe that maybe has a bit more moisture. Uh, that's really what I'm looking for personally in a fig variety is that location that it is probably adapted um adapted in so uh yeah let's kind of get started i don't want to go over some varieties that we talked about in this video here you can see uh we talked about how doug came to the staten island or long island fig festival we talked about things like 
Unknown Pastelier and Black Madeira and Desert King and, and Nero 600M and Thermalito and Exquisito. Those are all really great figs. I want to talk first, though, about some figs that you have to pick up if you live in a place with the Blastophaga or the Fig Wasp, right? Not everybody in your places are going to have the Fig Wasp. However, Southern California, it's pretty much everywhere or close to it. Um, and it's very easy to colonize there. Just put yourself, get yourself a capra fig, plant it in the ground. Um, they're everywhere. You know, figs are like weeds in these places. So um, it's pretty easy, pretty simple to get yourself a capra fig and then to colonize the fig wasp. And I would do that. I would certainly do that. If you can colonize the fig wasp, I would. And the reason for that, the fruit quality is going to be better, but you guys can grow figs that I can't. And that's namely something called Unknown Pastelier, which is probably the best fig that exists. It's really incredible. Inchario Preto is another. Um, some others here that I really like or would love to try and I think have the just the highest standards for flavor is the Vasilika Malisi. Um, that's probably a really good one. The Also the DFIC0023 Palmata Hybrid. This one I think comes from the USDA's collection. And uh, this one does require pollination. It's incredible. Uh, what else out there needs pollination? There's a fig called Marabout that probably is really worth growing as well that also needs pollination. So, so there's that. Uh, we talked about figs in the prior video like Borges Sot Noir and the Col de Doms. You got to have a Col de Dom fig, guys. You just have to. It, it's the perfect texture. It's very different than other figs that exist. You got to do it. Um, that or something called De La Roca, which we'll talk about in a bit. There's also Borges Sot Gris and Vila Sapor and Socorro Black. I totally would recommend those. There's Hate of the Argentile. And Hate of the Argentile uh, really has an uh, incredible cherry flavor to it. Um, it's quite acidic for those of you guys who like that acidic bite. And there's some other figs that we grow that also have this acidity and this cherry flavor to it, like Cavalieri and Fico Rubato, Verde Paso. You know, I would pick up one of those and I would stick with that uh, just to have that flavor profile because I'm probably, it's definitely even better where you guys live. And it's probably really something where you guys live. Um, so I would definitely go for one of those. See here, there's also the Adriatic types like White Madeira, Strawberry Verte. We talked about there's the Panache Fig. I would also consider Blanche de Du Saison. This here, what is this thing? I think this might be Violet Sapor. Uh, what else we got? Oh, this is a Vila de Bordeaux, and that's a big thing I would recommend. Um, I don't want to harp on this too much because we talked about it in the prior video we did last year, but we do want to, and I think you guys should really off the bat be thinking about three varieties, three varieties that come to my mind that are like the standards for where you guys live is Hardy Chicago, any of the Hardy Chicago types, um, any of the Violet de Bordeaux, so like Nero 600M, Vista, Violet de Bordeaux, Petite Aubique, um, Petite Negri. Also, Yellow Long Neck. Yellow Long Neck is such a big, juicy, amazing honey fig that I'm sure intensifies and is even better where you guys live. Um, and for the, you could pretty much just have a yellow long neck tree and that would feed an entire family and more. And you could call it a day probably with just that. Um, that's a huge fig. The amount of food that that tree produces is insane. Uh, what's this one here? This is Victoria. We'll talk about the Pons figs, I guess. Delson, Wami, Ron, Yellow, Long Neck. Bavera Branca. This is one that I would recommend if you have the Blastophaga. If you can pollinate the Bavera Branca, it's incredible. Um, Pastelier, we talked about in the prior one. Sanguinato. And then Ponte Tresa to round it off. So that is the um, the video from last year. All right. So what varieties here do we have to talk about? 
I would highly recommend you guys also consider another category of figs, which is pretty simple. The figs that have a really fantastic ability to dry up on the tree. Uh, those are the figs that not just can withstand our crazy humidity here, but they can withstand just about anything you guys got where you live as well. And they're going to dry up on the tree. Um, a lot of hardy Chicago types will do this, but that's a big deal because um, you don't want to have to be taking them off the off the tree, putting them in a dehydrator, even putting them outside and have to worry about them, like put them on like a bamboo rack or something like that and let the air flow you know go through them up and down and and you know protect them from bugs and critters and all kinds of different things it's just amazing and it's incredible if they can just dry up on the tree and that gives you guys like an extra crop that's um you know you can eat throughout the entire winter time you know it just pretty much won't stop where you guys live one of them here is a uh, calabacita or carabaceta uh, my friend Ben, who I met at the uh, Staten Island Fig Festival this year, this video is actually sort of his idea. This is a fig that he made me aware of, but it really is incredible in terms of its drying capabilities. It's like one of the most commercially dried figs. Uh, we also have Marsalazy. This one is a bit of a splitter though, but it does have incredible drying potential to it. Across the board, many growers have said this. There's also a fig called Verdino del Nord and Neruciola de Elba um, that have incredible drying capabilities. So does Moro de Caneva. I would really highly recommend that you guys look into these figs um, for somebody who's looking for something that they can dry in their climate. <clears throat> now, I'd also consider something called Aishia Black. Uh, this is highly regarded as one of the best figs that exists. It's hard to propagate, hard to grow. It's not really spread around as much as it should be just yet, but it's incredible for sure. Highly recommend it. One of the better figs that exist. Now we can talk about the, some of the ponds figs here. One for sure called Rona. This one seems to be doing well all over the country. You can go on Ponds' website, guys. I do recommend you get his book, especially in English. It'll really break down every little characteristic about these fruits. He has a nice description at the bottom here. I mean, there's so much information that he goes into detail on. That's why he is the leading expert alive today on figs. Um, Parachal Ramada, definitely recommend this one. You know, the stripes fig, the stripe figs, I can't really grow here. They just don't do well here. None of them have, like, the superior characteristics. They look nice and they taste nice. Um... But not all of them taste nice. The the Parajal Ramada, Panache, and uh, Marchenenka Ramada, wherever that one is in this little list here that we have. Here's Marchenenka Ramada. You can see how beautiful this is. These are the ones that taste good. And these are the ones I would recommend out of the Stripe Figs. Uh, you can kind of get too far into the Stripe Figs. And I have a friend that I personally, is a dear friend, but he uh, I think he's too obsessed with Stripe Figs personally. Um, Planera is another good one. Really dense, jammy texture. The, the flavor is off the charts. Even here, it's a really great fig. Victoria, we sort of mentioned in the last video. Uh, we have Beltran, and uh, this is a great one for sure. Um, Harvey has been ripening fruits of this. I think he's really the only one with it um, that I know of in the, in the United States, but uh, he really likes this one. Uh, I think maybe... Uh, yeah I think that's it um, but he seems to like it at least I don't really know but I'll tell you this it definitely looks incredible so as a one that you may want to consider I think this is one you should consider for sure it kind of reminds me of Ponte Tresa in a way uh, the De La Senora Hivernenka is one that is a, a really incredible fig even in my climate it's a top tier fig There's other. it goes by other names like Old de Purdue, and there's another name for a uh, Moro de Boo, I think. And Pons has confirmed them all to be synonyms here. Let me just confirm the Moro. Yeah, but Old de Purdue, I believe, is one of them as well. Or maybe it's not Old de Purdue. Yeah, so here's Moro de Boo. This is the same thing. Uh, it's probably not Old de Purdue, actually, now that I think about it. 
Yeah, it's not old day Purdue. There's another one. It goes by a third name. I forget the name. But I would just go with either one of those two. There's also Borda Barraquere. I think this one has a lot of potential even here. Um, definitely a tasty fig for sure. De La Roca we talked about. But you have to have either a Coldenom or De La Roca. It's just a must. They have a superior texture that other figs do not. It's unique in that way. It's also superior in that way if you ask me. Delson Wami Ron we talked about in the last video. And then a new one for me and one that not a lot of people are growing is the Dells Ermitons. This is an incredible fig, long season to it. It's also very late. So those of you guys who have that longer season, this is what you want. Really extend the season for you. Um, it's also incredible. So big one there for very, very end of the season. And then we can think about some others that I grow like Smith. Um, Smith's incredible, absolutely incredible. It's even recommended all throughout the country. People believed, oh, it must be only a humid climate fig, but that's just not true. There's so many people in dry places that love it. Um, we didn't even mention this fig, I think, last year. Uh, what are some other ones here? I would also recommend Sucret. Sucret's incredible. Really is a wonderful fig for its drying capabilities here. Um, so that's another one I recommend for, for getting a dried fruit. Um, it's also really tasty. Let's see here. What can we show you guys? So, um, yeah, we got, um, Socorro Black and Violet Sapor and Borges Oak Reese. I kind of put them in the same category for now, and they're really great recommendations for those of you guys who um who live in a place really anywhere they do pretty much so good everywhere um that it's wonderful let's see here what else can we show you guys hmm I'd also recommend Zafiro. Um, a friend of mine in California actually likes Zafiro as much as I do, and I highly recommend it. I think it's a wonderful fig. Uh, definitely worth trying. We mentioned Moro de Caneva. This is Moro de Caneva right here. Wonderful. I would even consider LSU Tiger. I think LSU Tiger has some great potential. What else? What else? Let's see, there were some other figs here that I recommend. And I was looking at this earlier, but I don't know why. I'd... These are my highest rated figs here. And if it's got a great flavor here, you bet your but it's gonna have a high flavor where you guys are. Um, so here's all my fives. We talked about De La Senora and Del Zermatons and De La Roca, Black Madeira, the Cold of Doms, Azores Dark, a hardy Chicago type. I would consider trying Campaneri. Um, uh, Campaneri also has some nice drying capabilities to it. Yeah, so I sort of guess that's it, guys. I think that's mostly it for this video and um, what I would recommend for you guys in these warmer, drier places. I'm sure there's some more out there that exists, and we'll come back to this maybe as we go along throughout the season, and we'll probably do a video like this next year um, updating you guys. But that's a wonderful start. I mean, I've given you guys so much fruits here varieties to start out with um, there's some unknowns that some people in california are finding and those look really uh like they have high potential some from probably uh, from eric or sacred origin for those of you guys who know uh the two of them um let's see 
Yeah, I'd also consider trying a blue Celeste and a black Celeste where you guys live. I think those have great potential to be really incredible fruits. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's mostly it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, check us out on FigBid. We are doing a little bit of a sale. We're going to have 30% off of our varieties that we have for sale remaining. We're trying to get rid of all of our, uh, free up all the room in our fridge by mid-January. So what I would suggest if you guys go to FigBid, which is in the description of the video, uh, you guys can purchase some cuttings that you guys want. Uh, whatever you guys want, uh, you can purchase it on the website on FigBid, but set it aside. Don't pay for it. Uh, contact me with the promo code Ross once you do that I can adjust the invoice I can give you guys the 30% discount then you guys can pay for it after I give you guys the discount um, so don't check out with PayPal before I I, uh, I give you guys the discount and adjust the invoice otherwise there's a slight fee and it's a bit more work but um, yeah no worries guys uh, appreciate the the viewership here if you guys want to see or want my thoughts on more varieties just ask me down below in the comments i'll try to get back to you guys um, as soon as i can thank you guys for watching this one we'll see you guys soon and uh, see you for tomorrow's video take care everybody